Hey, Hail Squad, get ready for our conversation with friend, entrepreneur, and brand builder Marie Folio. In part one of this amazing episode, we talk about the people who will win in the world of AI, how to tap into your intuition, the concept of creating before consuming, also sequencing, and the morning routine that will make you 42% more likely to achieve your goals. All that more on our part one interview with Marie Folio on this week's Heel Squad. Hey, Heel Squad with Maria Menounos fans. I'm going to put on my blue light glasses for my wife. It's not Maria Menounos. It's Mr. Maria Menounos. The backup quarterback is in. Subbing for my beautiful and talented wife. And uh, I'm really excited to be here today, even more so than ever, because th this is one of Maria's very, very best friends uh, I'll be interviewing today. We've had her on the show before, but um, man, what a positive effect she's had on Maria's life, which of course means a positive effect in my life, because as we know, happy wife, happy life. And because I am the corporate wife, uh, uh, Maria, in a, in a sense, Marie Folio, our upcoming guest, has made my life quite happy. Um, anyway... I digress. Let's start with the quote of the day. The secret to finding your passion is to bring to it everything you do. And that is for the uh, aforementioned and our upcoming guest, Marie Folio, named by Oprah as a thought leader for the next generation and owner of one of Inc.'s 500 fastest growing companies. Marie Folio has created a socially conscious digital empire that inspires millions. She's the star of the award-winning TV show Marie TV with over 75 million views and host of the Marie Folio podcast with nearly 26 million downloads. Marie has taught entrepreneurs, artists, and multi-passionate go-getters from all walks of life how to dream big and to back it up with daily action to create results. She runs the acclaimed business training program, as we say in Boston, B-School, the writing program, the Copy Cure, and the Joyful Productivity Program, Time Genius. And we are excited to have her back on Heel Squad to share more of her entrepreneurial knowledge. So with that, uh, Marie Folio. Marie, hi. Hi, Kev. It's so good to be with you. Thank you for uh, being um, a Mercy uh, guest <laughs> sitting in when Maria's out. You know, we've had people be some of Maria's friends who are even no longer her friends were so offended I was doing the podcast because her mom was passing. Maria had to be with her mom and I came in and they were like, well, I don't want to be with that guy. So thank you, Maria, for ha taking mercy on me and, oh, and sitting in here today. I love you both, Kev. I no. mean, the times that we've all been able to have meals and laugh and share jokes, I was like, when Maria texted me, I was like, are you kidding me? I love Kev. This is going to be a great conversation. We're going to have such a great time. Well, Marie, um, you are such a you've been such a great true friend to maria you know you have a lot of allies in the business you hope or you try to but you don't have many friends um and you have been such a great friend who's offered so much unconditional love and support and um you know it's just it's heartwarming and i and i was telling you before even the interview took place if i there's a handful of you your maria's friends and guests on this show that I will constantly say, oh my God, to other people. I'll say, oh my God, you need Marie Folio in your life. But I literally was just on a call with somebody who's actually a pretty powerful human being. I said, you know, you need Marie Folio in your life. Uh, you know, Marie, we, as we were talking before the show began, um, if you are somebody who dreams really big, but uh, you don't feel you have the means, Maybe you don't have that MBA, you don't have the trust fund, you don't have the connections, you don't have any of those things. Maybe you have a lot of bills, uh, whatever the case is, but if you have a big dream and you want to put it into effect, and it could be a creative dream, but also it could be a business dream, either one, Marie's the one that will help you take it from the kitchen table and not just inspire you, give you the practical steps to turn it into a working business model. And I know it started with your book, Everything is Figure Outable, because that was always the message that you had like, hey, we can always figure it out. And I think I know that's where it starts with your client base. But then from there, it becomes so much more sophisticated with what you do. Because I've heard you talk with Maria on Zooms and you start talking about Heel Squad and then you start asking all these questions. And I'm like, whoa, 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 slow down. If I didn't hear learn it on Shark Tank, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> but so well, that's what I love. Like, Maria, you start you will literally start from the kitchen table and then you go all the way to the office, the warehouse, whatever you want to call it. 
and um, it's so needed today. And uh, and I think that's kind of my elevator pitch on you, Marie, um, for everybody. So I think it's very relatable to people. And again, I could, I want you to talk now because I've said enough. Well, thank you for that. And I think you know you have such a beautiful audience of people who are, of course, passionate about their lives. They're passionate about health and wellness. And when you start looking at this truth that we have the power to create change in our lives, whether it's from a health perspective, our careers, our financial lives, our relationship, our mental health, emotional health, spiritual health, it's a really exciting prospect. But then for so many of us, it's like, okay, well, what are the steps? You know, like I can get really inspired by a possibility. I can maybe have a dream in my heart. You can see something on TV or listen to it on a podcast, read a book. But then when it comes down to brass tacks and understanding, well, how the hell do I get started? Like what's step one? Mm. And what are the things that I need to do every single day to start to see real progress on whatever that change or that transformation is? I feel like it's in my DNA, Kev, to solve problems. And I love helping people crack codes in terms of what they're capable of and getting them on that path and getting them far enough along where they're like, oh my gosh, I can do this, you know, and they start seeing their own power come to life and they start seeing their own confidence and they start seeing the road ahead. And I don't pretend to have all the answers, but I'm really, really good at helping people find their own and also putting them in front of the right simplified frameworks and action steps and training them in consistency so they can get the results that they deserve. And I think that's probably one of um, the most exciting things. You know, I think as human beings, so many times we have an idea that success, especially in terms of business and even relationships and, and finances and other aspects of life, that it's super complicated. And I've been doing this for 23 years now. And what I've seen time and time again in my own life and in the people I get the pleasure to work with is that it's often the simple fundamentals that if you can do them again and again and again, and of course you learn and you go and you, and you progress, but where I see a lot of people falling down is they're not consistent enough with the things that they want for themselves, you know, and whether it is eating in a particular way that's gonna really support your body in healing, whether it's moving your body on a consistent basis, and it doesn't have to be 24 seven, seven days a week where you never take a break. No, that's a little bit of a sickness. We don't need that. Um, with your finances, if you're not necessarily saving consistently, investing consistently, having a particular mindset about money consistently, you're not going to get the results that you're capable of. And so I think that's probably another one of my superpowers is training people and helping them develop the devotion and the discipline that they need to create extraordinary results, the kinds that they're capable of. I think just hearing that, if you were to put that on your fridge, be consistent. <sighs> Right. Like, so that I never thought of that. But now that you've made me aware of that, that's that's an actionable step we can all do. Um, I think, you know, with Marie, though, I honestly like, you know, you inspire us all. And I think the book did that. I think there's a lot of people after you now who've come who do the same thing. They inspire us. But what I love about you is you actually do build the business models, plural, like, whether it's marketing, um, the, the 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 questionnaires you've sent Maria I mean again it's just I can't even believe it's the 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 science of all of this that you've figured out and and I know with B school which is your latest venture and uh, B school is is an is uh, these online classes for yeah so B school is we we have it as the online school for modern entrepreneurs who want to both make money and make a difference so B school is this incredible four week experience it's kind of like um business boot camp we've got folks in there who've never had a business before and they're just like i know i want to be my own boss i know i want this freedom i know i want the time freedom the location freedom i have this idea for a product or service that i know in my heart could help people either change their lives or experience some type of joy or dream or aspiration or get out of some kind of pain. And they're like, I know I can do this, but what are the steps? We've also had people in there, Kev, who've had multiple multi-million dollar businesses before, but they hit a plateau or they hit that stage and season of their life where they were complete with what they did before, the business they did before. And they feel some inner calling to have a next chapter. And they're like, I need to refresh my skills. I want a new perspective. You know, my business looked a certain way for the past 10 or 15 years and it's not working for me anymore. Where do I go to kind of step into a whole new paradigm where I can create things that are more simplified, more streamlined, 
and have the impact that I want to have, but not necessarily work 24 seven, 365, you know, and burn myself out. I think one of the things, you know, Maureen and I have always talked about um, beautiful ideas and things like that. And I think you're probably referring to some of the conversations where we've had where she's shared a notion. I said, hey, can we look at it from a different point of view where you don't have all this heaviness in your potential idea? She's like, Marie, I never thought of it that way. That's genius. So one of the things I like doing is helping people recognize that you can have a business and a life that you love. You just have to learn some new skills around online marketing, um, digital businesses, and keep training yourself to think in these new simplified streamlined ways so that you can have that impact, you can have that income, but you don't have to build the heavy instructor infrastructure that say we needed 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, I think the big thing is the infrastructure does kill. And I think I'm a big lean and mean kind of guy. Yes. <laughs> um, and I think that, uh, yeah, more gets done. People are actually happier too. Um, but backing up, I feel like this is the age we're moving into. And, you know, COVID was one thing that kind of, I think, ignited in people a greater sense of entrepreneurialism. But some, you know, my coach just clued me in on that a lot of people subconsciously are realizing that the jobs are not going to be available with AI. So they're doing the, I want to work at home or I want to start my own business because somewhere inside, even if they're not aware of it, they know with AI, a lot of these jobs are going to go away. And I know we started talking about AI, but I asked you to yes. stop because I really wanted to get your thoughts on it. Yes. So let's dive into this because I think, first of all, it's so important. It's here. You can't put the toothpaste back into the tube, right? So it's not going away. It's only going to continue. Um, but my perspective on this, I think that if you really want to win and be invaluable, whether you are running your own company or you're a part of a small entrepreneurial team and you, you like that, by the way, being an entrepreneur is not better than being a part of a team. It's like you want to be a human that produces value in the world, that uses your gifts to create value for other people. And that can show up in any type of role, whether you're the head of the company or within the company. All of that said. I think the people who are going to win in the age of AI are the people who have a few things dialed. One is actually massive creativity. What do I mean by that? I've been playing with AI tools since they came out like two years ago, right? And everyone was like, oh my God, chat GPT, this is the best thing. It's going to write all my copy. It's going to write my sales pages and my emails and my social content. At still, still at this stage, it generates bland vanilla poop. Thank you. Land vanilla hoop. Yep. I know all the prompts. I know all the top people. You know what I mean? I've been I've been going deep. And oh I'm my goodness! I have befriended Chad. I you know someone told me please and thank you with Chad and it butter it up. I've done everything and and you're right. It it's, spits it's, out crap. Yes, it spits out generic empty crap that, calories. Yes empty calories that make you sound like you're going to be lost in a sea of mediocrity. Trust me. So the people that have their creativity on tap, their channel is open. They are able to use their personality, their personal experience. They're able to tell unique stories, put it into detail, have relationships. These are the people that are going to win in the age of AI because AI cannot compete with your uniqueness. It cannot compete with your storytelling ability if you know how to do it right. It cannot compete with your ability to form relationships and connect with other people. Like you're always gonna win. Sure, there's gonna be technology that it's not a battle. You wanna be able to use it as almost like, almost like a silly little assistant that can help speed up some repetitive tasks. But when it comes to your major art, your life's work, your ability to connect with other people, inspire them to say yes to your offers for your products and your services, your creativity needs to be open. Your channel needs to be open. I think the other thing is consistency. That consistency piece that we were talking about, if you don't have your creativity on tap consistently, you're not gonna be able to make it in this world. And that is such an easy skill to develop. And then the third thing I think is gonna help people stand out in this age of AI is your intuition. Being able to read a room, being able to feel into a market, being able to listen and understand what people need, we are all craving that humanity, that connection that simply cannot happen when you're using AI tools. Again, we've played with it. I have an amazingly smart team. We've tried all different kinds of things because we want to experiment. We want to learn. And every single time, 
it, it, we'll talk about this in a minute. I was having this notion for myself. I was watching my own community and knowing that they were craving something and there was something that I wanted to bring to them. It was a, a project called Dream Club that I had been journaling about for years. And it was like, there's no way AI could have generated this particular offering that we just created that involved dance, that involved um, understanding how to bring your dreams to life, that involved connecting people in these really unique ways in a way that I've never seen anyone else do with a coaching or community experience. None of that, Kev, could have come from AI. That came from my body wisdom, my intelligence, my consistency, my creativity, and my intuition, all of which AI has nothing on. Marie, can we talk about how do you get people to tap their intuition? Everyone has it. I tend yeah. to see it more in females as well. Yeah. But I also see it blocked with static, with stress, yep. with trauma. Uh, yep. Or just lack of mindfulness with me, just being a lackadaisical, goofy person, walking like <laughs> tripping through. You know, just like I always say, you know, if it were if Donkey Kong were my life, those barrels falling down, the the ape is throwing. I'm just just jumping over every barrel I can, and just but I'm not looking at the top to get the ape and get out. I'm just you know back. Right. I would say back in the day. Now I'm more mindful, but yes. I I what are your what are your tips to like tap the intuition? Yeah. So there's one tip. This is very actionable. I want everyone to write this one down. This is a mantra. I actually think it might be my, my next book. Create before you consume. Create before you consume. So there's a stat that I uh, came across when I was building out Time Genius, our course about time and, and creativity. Did you know that 80% of smartphone users around the world within 15 minutes of waking up look at their phone? I did know that actually. You did know because that. Because it's me. Yes. Yeah, and I, you know, no, yeah. well, listen, John Taffer from Bar Rescue goes yeah. even further. I picked up my phone one time because he's all about consumer behavior. Yes. And his whole thing is manage impressions. But when I picked, one time I picked up my phone, he said, You know, buddy, you do that 289 times a day, don't you, on average? Like he had it even down. But yes. I do know this. So please, but please continue. Yes. So create before you consume, because most people are consuming first. And what they don't realize is that the moment you pick up this thing, right, and you're just, you're opening it up and you are consuming, whether it's through email, your newsfeed, yes. any type of social media, you're receiving the stress, the negativity, the bad news, other people's agendas. And instantly that has a neurobiological chemical impact in your entire body. For most of us, it puts us in some form of fight I or flight. I think for all of us. All of us. Seriously. Right? It's like, never freaking good. It's not all good news. And by it's the way, even if it is, Marie, let me offer this. Even if yes. it is, let's say it's your birthday and you get all these great birthday texts. Yes. Like, like it's still like such a blast of dopamine, right? That you're going to come down from like any extreme hit that you're going to get. So I think it's everybody. Yes. Please continue. So, so that's, and it's an unconscious habit. And what we know from science is that for us human beings, up to 40%, I would say it's probably like 40 to 60% for most of us, of our lives are lived out of habit, unconscious habit. These habits and patterns that we just do every single day without even thinking about it because it's what we do. It's how our brain kind of saves energy so we could focus on other things those other hours. But create before you consume is this fantastic, not only is it a mantra, it is a directive and it's a philosophy. So let's say rather than opening up your phone and taking those first 15 minutes a day, flooding yourself in stress, uh, the stress hormones of cortisol and getting yourself all friggin' in a tizzy, what if you took those first 50 minutes and let's say, um, Kev, your primary project or the thing that you most want to work on right now at this stage and season of your life, let's say it was getting your health back in order. And let's say specifically it was like, you know what? I know that if I meditated even for 10 or 15 minutes every day, that would start inching me towards having a really positive effect on my nervous system. I would start to get ahead of my day. I know the science, it's really good for my brain. If you did that just for 15 minutes, rather than looking at your phone, I guarantee you did it for 10 days in a row, you would feel completely different than if you continued with your consume before you create habit. Now let's say you're someone who wants to write a book. 80% of people in the world at least want to write a book. They think they should write it. That's according to research uh, with the New York Times. Let's say instead you're like, I really want to get my book done. If you spent the first 15 minutes of your day or 20 minutes of your day after you got coffee, let's be real, and you sat down and you wrote, over like a month or so, you would have a working 
table of contents, maybe the first couple drafts of your first couple chapters, like you'd be off to the races. Let's say you wanted your relationship to get better. Rather than looking at your phone, the first thing you do is think about, oh, well, maybe I'm going to lean over and, you know, give my partner a little snuggle or a kiss or see what they want or just do something that invests in the, the relationship or the health of the relationship. You could go down the list with literally any change you wanted to make in your life. And if you start training yourself to create before you consume, it is a game changer. Well, I know they even advise writers to write the first couple hours of the morning. Yes. Those are just two hours every morning. Just write. But maybe right. but creating could be creating fitness, creating muscle, go to the gym. Uh, for Maria, it is the uh, circadian rhythm. And she won't look at the phone now, thanks to you and people like you. She, she gets away from that. I can see where that would make a difference. And again, create before you consume with consistency. With Just consist try it. Try that piece. for like a month. Like just try it. And here's the deal. It's the it's really the compound effect. And Kevin, we know this, you know, anyone who's even dipped their toe into the world of personal finance and you know the miracles that happen with compound interest. Yes. Compound interest and the compound effect or how small little actions will snowball over time. That is the biggest success secret there is. It's not uber complex. You don't need to have all of these crazy multi-step things to like get your whole life in order. If you just do a few simple daily disciplines like create before you consume, I'm telling you, before you it know happens. it, your entire life will feel different. It will be different because you're different. Okay, you guys, we're gonna take uh, our first break. When we get back with Marie, we're gonna keep this amazing conversation going uh lots more to go over marie will be right back hill squad hey hill squad we are back with our interview with uh marie forleo and uh we're talking about creating before you consume i know we left off on that uh i want to continue with that um here's the thing marie i know that uh my best creating comes when i look my best and i will tell you you have amazing hair like maria Okay, right. So, um, one of our sponsors is uh, a product called Way, and Maria bought it for me because I had uh, dry hair, and as we say in Boston, we call we refer to hair, hair as your salad. And um, as uh, Nikkei, one of our producers, had mentioned, um, you know, every now and again, you get older, your your um, your salad gets a little wilted, and so <laughs> Maria was kind enough to get me. Uh, these whey products or this this whey hair con leave-in conditioner, I put it in my hair and all of a sudden I had young man's hair again. And then suddenly the next day the product was gone because Maria stole it and started using it herself. But I see you, oh, have, you had a fresh salad. Yes, I had amazing. a fresh salad thanks to oh. whey uh, and the whey products. Uh, and, and if you are interested in also having really great hair like Marie and Maria, uh, mine, you know, N slash A, it's not applicable. Um, Go to theway.com, T-H-E-O-U-A-I.com. Use promo code HEALSQUAD and get 15% off. And then you too can have a fresh salad, a.k.a. hair, nice head of hair. Okay, so with our great hair, head of hair, let's talk about creating before you consume. Yeah, I want to share just a little brief anecdote. Uh, one of our Time Genius students who I took through the program and Create Before You Consume was one of the concepts that we teach. And she had like the mind blowing emoji moment. And she put this comment and she's like, Marie, I have been feeling so terrible about myself, so exhausted and depressed. And, you know, I just realized like, I'm not doing all the things that I really want to do, but I don't feel like I have time. I don't have the bandwidth to do it. And she's like, great before you consume changed everything. She's like, here's what I realized. She realized she was addicted to Pinterest. And she goes, all this time I am spending Consuming other people's dreams is costing me creating my own. And it's this idea, this notion that every time you pick up your phone or every time you just doom scroll or every time you go in that thing and are just consuming what other people have created, you are costing you your own big dreams. And for me, that really hit home. I love the way that she put that because it is pretty binary. You know, I want to talk about this too. This isn't to say that we shouldn't consume because I love reading books. I love watching films. I love listening to music. I love being inspired. But it's that understanding that sequencing matters for most of us, not all. 
for most of us, those early morning hours and even throughout the day, we have uh, our cognitive gas tank is pretty full, right? And then as you get towards the end of the night, it's like usually that's not our best time to whip out our most impressive creative work. And so, you know, for me, it's all about sequencing. It's like, I'm going to create and protect that time first. I'm going to create my own dreams rather than flittering away my life, consuming what other people have already created, basically their dreams. So I just wanted to share that if it was helpful, because I would imagine that there's at least a handful of people in your audience who might be feeling that way, like, oh, I don't have the time. I don't have the energy. Everything is so full. But if they start really taking a step back and looking at it through the create before you consume filter, they're like, oh, damn, I am actually consuming other people's dreams rather than creating. And especially in the morning, no, and if the stats are 80%, then surely the, our audience is as affected. But I think I think 80 is a conservative number. I think that, yeah. and I think that number is going to, I think it's going to go up higher as people age out because the yep. younger generation is so trained on the phones. So even if you're just going to practice that in your mornings, um, I can see where the difference would be. So a couple of things I you mentioned sequencing. Can you go yes. any d deeper with that? Yeah. So I think this is important for everyone to get really self-aware. When do you, you do your best creative work? In what kind of environment? At what time of the day? So I know I'm a very early morning kind of person. And I know that I have all of this creative firepower. I know that the rest of the world usually isn't up by the time I'm up because I like to get up really early. What time My do you phone get up, is not on. What'd you say? What time do you get up? A anywhere between five and six. Okay. Usually my eyes pop open at around five and then I snuggle for a few minutes or two and then I like make my way downstairs and make some coffee. So usually by about 5.30 or 5.45, I'm writing my goals. I write my goals down every single day. I do a practice that's called morning pages, which I learned from Julia Cameron, who wrote like the mega bestseller called The Artist's Way. I think it was huge in the 90s, but almost every major filmmaker, TV show writer has heard and many of them use morning pages. So it's three pages of stream of consciousness writing every single day. Okay, so, and, so, you, yeah. so literally in this order, you're waking up. I'm waking up. You write down your goals for the, for the day. Well, I get coffee first. I'm a coffee first kind of person. Like, so okay. I drink water, hydrate, make sure my brain is nice and we like it moist, right? I'm Italian. I'm like, keep everything nice. No, and, and you know what else? Um, Dr. Yes. Kim uh, DeRama, who we've had on the show, her big thing is um, it's to drink a lot of water in the morning because you're going to cleanse the toxins from the night before as well. So yep. that's great. Totally. Okay. So then you have your coffee. Then I have my like, and I set up, I make myself like a nice little setup and I do this the night before. This is another trick that we teach you in Time Genius. It's called mise en place. So it's a French term that means everything in its place. So I used to bartend and wait tables. That's how I put myself through college. And it's also how I funded the starting of my business because I didn't have any money. I was tens of thousands of dollars in debt. And I was like 23 years old trying to figure out like, how the hell do I build a coaching business when... Who the hell is going to hire a 23-year-old life coach? I don't know anything, but I know that I am meant to be in this world. So when you're a bartender, what you do is before the shift, you set everything up in advance. You cut all your lemons, you cut yeah. all your limes, right. you make all your little orange twists, your lemon twists. Everything is set up so that when it's game time and it's go time, you can fly. Right. You can grab everything that you need and do a spectacular job because you don't have to go find things. It's set for you. This is one of the simplest, most effective tools to do for yourself the night before you go to bed. So here's what my mise en place looks like, Kev, the night before. I don't like to see a lot of clutter because it makes my brain a little crazy. Mine too. So I'll take six minutes, right, to like fluff the pillows, put the remote control, you make sure the kitchen's looking kind of nice. Mm -hmm. And here's what I do. I have a mountain Sag Harbor right now. In our kitchen, we have a tiny little banquette. I set my notebook down. I set my pen down. I get the coffee set. Like I make it my little candle. So I set it up so that when I come down the stairs and I'm like barely formed and not really conscious yet, it looks like it's been set up like a spa. But I did that. That was past me taking care of future Marie, and it took like five or six minutes. Then drink my water, have my coffee. I do my morning pages first because that's a stream oh, of consciousness. Morning pages before the goals. And so tell me yeah. about the stream of consciousness. I mean, what am I writing in these three to five pages? Oh, 
anything. You literally cannot do it wrong. Your complaints, if you got body aches, your dreams, something you thought about, something you might want to explore, like stream of consciousness could mean like, oh, wow, I really got to make that appointment with my doctor. Yeah, I need to follow up with those tests. You know what? Josh's birthday is coming up. I need to get him a birthday card. Oh, wow. Did we book that table in Rome for our trip? Like you literally just brain dump any minutia and it's wild, Kev. When you do this for three pages, and I'm, I'm holding up something I know on the podcast people can't see, but it's just like a regular notebook like you would get at CVS for like $1.50. You know what I mean? It doesn't yeah. have to be any special kind of thing. And you just go for three longhand pages. By the way, for anyone listening, if you Google Julia Cameron morning pages on her site, which is a classic, she walks you through like exactly what these morning pages are. So I'm doing my best job to, to do her right but just know that it's really easy to Google and a lot of people have written about this. And I would highly suggest for anyone who this is like, oh, this sounds really interesting. Please pick up The Artist's Way, the classic book, because it's a game changer. But the morning pages, you write anything and everything that comes to your mind. Even if you have to write, I have nothing to say right now, but I'm going to keep my pen moving, blah, 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 blah. And you go and you go and you go until you hit three pages. Kev, it is phenomenal what starts coming out of you in terms of answers to questions you're struggling with ideas that you didn't even know existed you start to work out in my opinion and make a connection with your higher self divine wisdom infinite intelligence whatever label works for you doesn't matter but you start tapping into this different source of intelligence and insight that is often not available when we're just in the kind of monkey mind of every day, if that makes sense. So do you think maybe it's because we're dumping? We're dumping like the crap out, and so now what comes is the pure? Correct. And when you do this practice every day, it's almost like any other relationship, right? Like if you and I, if we don't talk for 10 years, we're going to be a little rusty. But if you and I are talking every day, even just for a little bit, we're going to get intimate, meaning we're going to know each other. We're going to have a deeper connection. There's going to be more flow between us. And so that tool is this incredible, miraculous, very simple, basically free way. Remember we were talking about intuition? And I was telling you, like, if you want to win in the future, you got to have your intuition on tap. This is one of the best, easiest ways to get in touch with your intuition, your source of higher intelligence, higher wisdom. Again, it costs you nothing but like a dollar fifty for you know a notebook you get at CVS. And and do you throw away the pages afterwards. So Julia Cameron is first of all, this is one of the rules around it. You don't want anyone to see it, and you don't even need to go back and reread it because that's not the purpose. I keep mine because I find them fascinating, and I have a home environment where Josh, my partner, we've been together over twenty years now. 21 years? Yeah, 21 years. And we have such respect and trust. I don't need to worry about him looking at my ish. Do you know what I mean? Like I can keep them in a drawer. I trust him with my life. He would never look at anything. But I know not everyone has that situation. So you can do whatever you want with it. Julia Cameron says burn them if you want. The purpose is not necessarily for you to go back and reflect and look at them. The purpose is to clear the channel and to start to get in touch with your own higher intelligence. I had someone tell me you know, about the burning aspect, especially if it's, if you're purging negative yes. feelings, if that's yes. the, um, if that's the purpose, I was having a really hard time getting over something. And someone said to me, write about it for 30 straight days and just write about how angry and upset everything. And for X amount of minutes, X amount of pages, and then burn it every day and just try it. And it actually did work. <laughs> yes, um, it did. It writing it down. It sounds so simple, but we're not taught to do this. Um, And it is incredibly transformative. And so again, if you're afraid of people kind of seeing your writing, you can get rid of it, you can burn it, you can destroy it, you can shred it, you know, whatever you want. I just keep mine, that's my own little quirk because as a someone who creates content and I teach and I write a lot, it's often really useful for me to be able to go back and pull stories or pull things that I wouldn't remember if I hadn't written them down. And you know what else about when the place is all in order, the Meeson place? Yes. Doesn't it feel good to come down those stairs to a, a clean kitchen or a clean office? Doesn't it? You know, I, I, we have a term in show business. If, you, if you're ever making a movie and you hear the director say, okay, everyone, back to one. Back to one is back to your original position. 
And yes. so I use it around the house all the time. Like, all right, we need to get this place back to one. Yes. And, you know, what it looked like when we first came in, the pillows were all in the right place and the dishes were put away. And, you know, and I'm very big and I'm sure in the booth, Dwayne's probably like he's him and I've only been together for a year. So he's probably still in the cringe phase of this. But we're waxing cars and we're washing. We're wa what is it? The wax on, wax off. He, we're in that karate kid phase. Yes. But the understanding that I've taught everyone over at my network after buzz was about you know, when you come into a clean environment, you feel better. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're all together. We can all do this. Let's all put everything back to one, but we'll all feel better. People who come into the network will feel better. And you just see over time, it will make a difference. Um, it does. Right. That Very you don't logistically, see. it makes a difference energetically. Yes. How you feel when you come into an environment that's set up for your success from a productivity standpoint, like when I was talking about my days bartending and waiting tables, you know, me having everything at my fingertips meant that I could take care of five to 10 to 15 customers so much faster because I didn't have to think or look, I could just yes. go. And so it's that same notion with any creative act that we're doing. And it doesn't, it's not about being a perfectionist. Like I just keep taking actions. And this is kind of a lesson for me that I spill over into every area of my life. I want to take actions today that future Marie is going to love past Marie for. I want to love on my future self because she's out there. She's coming. So what do I need to do today to love on her? What do I need to do today to set her up for success? What do I need to do today to be a good partner to my future self? Because again, God willing, I'm going to be around for a little bit. I need to take care of her. And the time to do that is now. Can we put a pin in that? Because yes. you know what? I want to get into that tomorrow with you. That's huge. Um, before we do, though, I want to, I do want to, you know, going back to the, um, you're having things at your fingertips. And because I, I, people will always say, how do you get so much done? And um, it's not necessarily that I'm working so much harder. It's that I, I do have everything in a certain place. But th see, I'm also somebody who I think internally is not very organized and is not, you know, so I have to be militant. Yes. Because I'm not. So I'm just saying, I'm talking to the people out there that just say, oh, I'm not organized. I'm kind of, a, well, I was the same way. Had a nice Catholic shame-based family system that beat yep. it out of me. And I'm grateful that they did. But I have to work really hard. And one of the things is I'm all about, you know, putting things back in the place, having things at the disposal. And, and that's how I am able to get things done. And I think that, you know, I, I had an interesting film teacher uh, a direct, who's teaching directing and the first thing he said and the most important thing he said is okay who here is organized and like a couple people raise in who is not organized he said okay um to be a great director you need to get organized and it was like wait what i thought we were going to talk about i don't know lenses <laughs> or how to work with actors no that was his big thing i think that translates to everything in business Oh, it does. And look, let's be clear. I am a maniac. Like I have an ADHD brain. So I am all over the goddamn place. So everything we're talking about here are these little tips and tricks that I use to keep myself on track <laughs> because it's yeah. not an easy task. It does not come naturally to me. So I've had to create little systems and little habits and little practices that allow me to be as creative as I truly am but also not drive the people around me nuts like my team and to ship things, meaning to complete them, to get them out into the world, to share them with the world. So hopefully they can benefit some people. Yeah. The, uh, make, don't make you people around you crazy. <laughs> yeah. That, that, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, my thing is I am always trying to educate the people around me to say, it's going to make your life easier too, you know, in, in your own practices. But I have felt that, um, that that's one of the biggest steps and then maybe but go back to mindfulness and awareness if you're aware that maybe you are loose uh, or not very organized or forgetful i you know i um whether it's blue light glasses or headsets or just different things i need in my day i tend to lose them marie i leave them behind oh. so what i did was my workaround is rather than buy the $150 pair of blue lights, I buy them on Amazon for $11 and I buy them in bulk. And, you know, that's kind of my thing, you know, and, yeah. and, and, uh, but for the money that I'm investing there, I'm able to keep going. 
Yes. You know, I'm able to keep the trains running and getting all that other stuff done. Um, okay, so Marie, let's um, let's wrap for today. Tomorrow, I really want to drop explore that notion, what you just said um, about my loving on your present self, investing in your present self for your future self. So I yes, think loving will... on my future self, like doing that today, thinking about who she is, what she needs, and taking care of her now. And then I think I want to do here more about, and by the way, did we finish morning routine? So I don't want to like, I don't want to like. We didn't talk about the daily goal writing, but no, we can. No, let's go. No, let's do it, please. We have to do it. Oh, okay. So after I do, you know, my morning pages, then I write down my top 10 goals and I write them down every day. So here's the science. We know for sure that any human being is 42% more likely to reach their goals if they simply write them down. How much percent? 42%. This is based on research done by Dr. Gail Matthews, who's at the Dominican University of California. She's like the only one who has an official study on this. Um, and it's just, it's so simple. Like Kev, in any other aspect of life, if I said, look, if you do this one simple thing, you're going to have a 42% I'm in. higher That's chance. That's why I'm writing it down spray. right now. Of course. It's like nobody would not take those odds. And you're it's like, a choice yes, and no. we can all write. I'm going to do those things. And so for me, I am very clear on what the top, let's say nine or 10 things are that I would love to either get done or see major progress on before the year end. And these are just fun things. These are things that bring me joy and excitement or things that stretch my capabilities. And I have them memorized. And when I'm done with my morning pages, I write them down every day. Because look, if you're 42% more likely to reach your goals, if you just write them down, there's no study on this, but it doesn't take, you know, a rocket science to figure out if you do it every day, it's going to go up from there. And so and is it the me, same goals often? Yeah, it is until I knock one off the list. So like at the beginning of the year in January of 2024, you know, I had 10 and then I knocked one off the list. And right now in my life, I prioritize joy and spaciousness. I'm not filling another 10 spot. I'm, I got it down to nine. I love it. I'm, yeah. You know and I maybe mean? in the new year. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I got nine and I'm cooking on them and I'm working on them and I'm putting energy towards them and I'm putting focus on them. And here's another reason why this works, not even simply from a sheer fact of we know the research writing it down, but also for me, because sometimes I can have a lot of trouble focusing as a multi-passionate entrepreneur, I got ideas for days, right? That's never my problem. More ideas than I'll ever be able to handle in my lifetime. So writing it down helps me stay focused. But there's this other aspect to our brains called the RAS, the reticular activating system. And we all know this, but it's like a nice reminder. You know, there's so much information, Kev, coming in at us every single day from so many sources that our brain lovingly sifts and sorts through what is important to us. And the most simple example is you can be at a party and there's tons of people. You got all these voices, da -da 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 -da, you know what I mean? There's like music bumping, blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you can hear faintly, someone says, Kev. You didn't hear any other shit that was going on, but you heard someone say, Kev, and instantly you can turn and catch it because you know that's your name and your brain, your RAS system has said, that's important. I need to pay attention. Someone's trying to call me. Same thing as if, you know, but before you got a car, right? I know, Josh, we were very excited about getting a Rivian. He was really excited about getting uh, a Rivian. Yeah electric yep. chalk right and before we even talked about it i was like i didn't notice them on the road and then all of a sudden we had this conversation and we're driving around new york and i'm like oh rivian oh rivian oh because now my brain we've kind of planted a seed this is important so you start seeing it everywhere you start paying attention to it in the same way when you write down your goals and this is my perspective you write them down every single day you're telling your reticular activating system what's important so out of the, all the gajillion things that you see, that you hear, that you come across, you're giving your brain instructions, a little bit of a program to signal to you when there may be information, a person, a conversation, something in your environment that can help you achieve one of those goals. I love this. And then now we're off to start our day. Yes. Okay. And now we're off to start our day. Okay. Now, um, one of the goals that I'm going to write down yeah, is is with regards to Macy's and July 4th. Uh, summer's biggest event is just around the corner. This Thursday, catch Macy's 4th of July fireworks live on NBC. 
Why isn't Maria hosting that? Hmm. And streaming on Peacock or see it live on the Hudson River in New York and New Jersey. Don't miss spectacular performances and inspiring salute to the American spirit that is sure to be one of the summer's greatest hits. If you're not going to be watching in person and need some inspiration on what to wear to the big event, make sure to head to my wish list, Maria's wish list, using the link in the description of this episode, and let us know what you end up with. Yeah, because guess what? All the 4th of July picnics and parties and uh, very exciting time in the summer. You know, when I was a kid, 4th of July, you know, the mean adults would say, yeah, summer's over. That's it. Back to school. And you'd go, no, but really it's kind of... uh, yeah, it's kind it, of true. It, it, it well, shh, we we want to be positive, Marie. No, but I yeah, know, I know, I know. Everything I'm just goes joking, so fast. But we but have that. We say that Josh and I like. We're like, no, no, no. Summer's just starting because like you don't want that panic to set in. You yeah, got so many more just weeks, starting. So. Plenty of yeah, time. Nothing starting. but time. And uh, but you know, our friends at Macy's have been amazing, and I'm a big fan of anything New York Macy's because Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street is a yes. phenomenal movie, and I love how certain things in that store still haven't changed. Um, and I look forward, I think sometime in July, we're actually after the fourth, we're going to be there, um, broadcasting live. So, um, you know, just shout out to our friends at Macy's, but, uh, also if you, if, uh, whether you watch the fireworks or not, uh, get into your Macy's and, um, get some fun clothes for the summer, as we say. Uh, all right. So Marie, tomorrow, uh, I'm going to need you back because I do want to work on future Kev, um, and I know that starts with taking care of present Kev. I also want to know more about starting the, you know, more steps in starting the business from the kitchen table. I think that's a, that's a big one. Um, Sounds good. All right. All that and more. Uh, and in the meantime, as my beautiful and talented wife always says, and I don't want to turn around to see this. You would know, say five years doing this show and I still have to read Maria's mantra. Be nice people, make good choices and stay present. Yeah, I didn't even have to look. This podcast and all related content published or distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menunos or MariaMenunos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you. Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.